Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you for this day of worship. We thank you because you've given us the love to listen to your word, whatever you have to say to us. And as we come together this day to listen to you again, we pray that what we hear will be a blessing to every one of our lives in Jesus' name. Give us the victory, the victory that Christ has provided on the cross of Calvary, that we will live in the enjoyment and the experience of it. Bless us this day. In Jesus' name we pray. I want to read to you again from John chapter 10, verse 10. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. We started last week with the message, the gateway to the abundant life. And today I want to share the word of God with you on 365 days of victorious living. That means a daily experience of victorious living all throughout the year. Jesus Christ made a statement and he said, the devil called the sea cometh not but for to steal and to destroy, to kill and to destroy. But I referring to himself, the Lord Jesus Christ, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Abundant life in all areas of living is God's will, God's promise, Christ's offer to each of us. But then in experience, we know that many, many people among children of God, in very many churches, do not have and do not experience total, complete victory. And that is the reason we have committed ourselves this month to talk on and reveal the deep truths of the Word of God concerning the abundant life and concerning victory in all areas of our lives. But as we look at the New Testament on the provision of the Lord, for a victorious living. We cannot forget that the Old Testament is intimately linked up with the New Testament. And the more understanding you have of the Old Covenant, the more appreciation you have for the New Covenant. The more understanding you have for the people of the Old Covenant as they received the benefits and the blessings, the more you will have on how to enter into the benefits and the blessings of the New Covenant. So that is why we're linking up all that we have been reading with the experiences of the children of Israel back in the days of old. That we'll see how the victors got victory, how the victims got defeated, and then we can follow the path of victory. Learning from the experience of the children of Israel, we turn to Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1, reading from verse 1. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all these people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea, toward the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life, as I was with Moses. So I will be with thee, I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee, be strong and of a good courage. For unto these people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, 
that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. As we consider victorious living, we are considering victory in all the areas of our lives. Victory in areas that matter. Victory over sin, over Satan, over sickness, over spirits, evil spirits, over self, over circumstances. Now you need to really look into the word of God and see the privilege, the provision that God has provided for every one of us. Now, as much as I know, I know many, many Christian preachers and in many, many churches, the limit of the victory they know is the limit of victory over sin. That's all. But you know, that's just a fraction of the whole thing. Other people try to get some victory over self. The selfish life, the sensual life, the self-indulgent life. They try to get the victory over sin and over self. But you see, that is just a small part of the whole deal. Other people try to have some victory over sickness. But then not totally over all the sicknesses, but just a little. But even when you have got victory over sin, over self, and over sickness, it's still just a part of the whole deal. But you want to understand that when Jesus Christ hung on that tree on the cross of Calvary, and he looked up and he said, it is finished, he finalized Satan's dominion over man. And if man will know the truth, there is victory over Satan. And as you get the victory over Satan, there is also the victory over spirits. The spirits that torment, the spirits that are evil, the spirits that oppress, and the spirit that destroys. Then, the victory over circumstances. That you are no longer tossed about. You are no longer dribbled about by the circumstances in life. But then you have the victory, you are the master of circumstances. And as we discuss today, we, we go really deep into the scriptures and want to learn something about the complete, the total victory over sin, over Satan, over sickness, over spirits, over self and over circumstances. It's something that is rare and you don't come by it in many, many assemblies. But then as we desire victory, it will be alright to desire the total thing. We need to desire victory very, very strongly if we're going to enjoy what is already made available by Christ through his sacrifice on Calvary. To have victory, we must have V-I-C-T-O-R-Y. That means we must have V for vigilance. Because if that soldier is going to overcome in that battle, if that soldier is going to go to the war front and he's not going to die, and they're not going to bury him while the battle is still on, he must be vigilant. Because the enemy is not careless or stupid and it's only the vigilant soldier that will be able to get through and have the victory. And that is where victory starts, that you are vigilant on your life, vigilant on the word of God, vigilant keeping the enemy at a distance. You are vigilant because you want the victory. And then there is instruction, I for instruction. The soldier needs instruction to have the victory. The student needs instruction to have the victory in exams. The worker needs instruction to be able to get through in that place of work and get promotion. We need vigilance. The Bible says your adversary, the devil, goes about running as a lion. Therefore, be sober, be vigilant. And then in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 13, take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Don't leave her because that instruction is the very essence of your life. Then the C is for consecration. You want victory? You'll need to be vigilant. You'll need to pay attention to instruction. Then you'll need consecration. I beseech you therefore, brethren, 
by, by the mercies of God that you submit yourself, you give yourself, you offer yourself a living sacrifice unto the Lord. That is your acceptable service. Consecration. Because, you know, dedication or commitment or consecration is what you find in every successful life. The businessman will not be successful or victorious if he's not committed. The student will not be victorious or successful if he is not committed. And the soldier will not be victorious on the battlefield if there is no consecration, commitment. The T is for triumph. Triumph over temptation. Temptations will come. And the one that is always yielding to temptation every day will never make it. Will never have the victory. But the one that determines and makes up his mind, I'll be vigilant. I'll listen to instruction. I'll be consecrated to the Lord. I'll be triumphant, triumphant over temptation and the tempter. And then O is for obedience. You know what Samuel told Saul? Saul, the first king of Israel, wanted to still have the honor of a king, but doesn't have what it takes for a man to remain on the throne, for a man to remain in victory. Samuel told him to obey is better than sacrifice. And if we're going to have the victory, O is for obedience. Then there is our resistance against the flesh, resistance against the devil. Resist the devil steadfastly in the faith. And then why is for yielding. Yielding to the Lord, yielding to his spirit. Have you come across this verse before? Second Corinthians, look at it. Second, Corin Second Chronicles, rather. Second Chronicles, chapter 30. Verse 8. Second Chronicles chapter 30, verse 8. Now be ye not stiff necked as your fathers were, but yield yourselves unto the Lord and enter into his sanctuary, which he has sacrificed, which has sanctified forever, and serve the Lord your God that the fierceness of his wrath may turn away from you, yielding to the Lord, yielding to the Spirit of God. In Romans chapter 6, verse 13, Neither yield yourself or your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Well then, as we're talking about victory, we're talking about victory in a very serious sense because overcoming, overcoming sin is a serious matter. Overcoming Satan is for the serious, diligent, determined believer. Overcoming sickness is for the, the believer that determines to develop his faith that sickness will not put him down every time. Overcoming the spirit is going to take a spirit, a human spirit of a person that knows how to conquer. A man that will not, you know, just pull the sand and slip by while the evil spirits, tormenting spirits are just coming all over him and he say, well, uh, I know that I'll have the victory by and by. It doesn't come to people like that. And the people that are going to overcome self are the people that are determined and serious even against self. And those who are going to be master of circumstances are not just leading a mediocre, lazy, indolent, idle life. They're the people that desire victory so very strongly. And I've told you that such people, they're vigilant, they listen to instruction, they're consecrated or committed, they, they want to triumph over every temptation. Obedience is the watchword of their lives. They resist the devil, they resist evil, they resist the flesh, and they yield to the Lord, they yield to the Spirit. Now, you know, last week we saw that God's provision for Israel is very similar to his provision for the church. And it's the church that is to enjoy the benefits of the new covenant. Today we come to this victorious living, rich, rich study of the word of God. And as we want to learn how to daily live in victory, we'll consider just five points. Number one, the history of victors. History of victors. In the world of science, inventors try to study the inventors of the past. Researchers try to study the, research, uh, the researchers of the past. In the, his, in, the, in the field of education, those who want to get to the top in any field of education, they are busy studying about the people that went before and they want to know what made them the people they were, the great inventors of the past. They want to know about them. 
and if you want to study about victory in a spiritual sense victory over everything that is against your life you want to study the history of victors those who have gone before number two hindrances to victory because if you know where the hindrances are you'll be able to know how to overcome then number three the highway to victory discover the way and then you'll begin to walk you'll begin to take the steps that will lead you to victory number four hosanna of victors the victims are always grumbling murmuring complaining nothing ever works for the victim but the victors are always shouting the praises of god there is a shout coming from the heart of the victors and there is hosanna of the victors then number five the hour of victory we're not going to waste time we're going to discover when the hour of victory is and we're going to begin to live in that victory the history the hindrances the highway the hosanna and the hour now the history of victors as we have learned last week and as i repeated today that the lives of the victors of the past they challenge us and they encourage us because there is much to learn from them in Deuteronomy chapter 1 Deuteronomy chapter 1 we're reading from verse 6 the Lord our God spake unto us in hurry saying ye have dwelt long enough in this mount Moses woke up the children of Israel Moses said, the Lord said, you have dwelt long enough outside the land of promise. You have stayed long enough in the wilderness. You have stayed long enough outside the land flowing with milk and honey. And if we look at our lives, haven't we stayed long enough outside abundant life? Haven't we stayed long enough uh, outside the land of victory? Haven't we stayed long enough in the prom uh, haven't we stayed long enough outside the promises of the Lord? Then it is time that we as individuals and corporately as a church we begin to consider what leads into the abundant life. And then we enter immediately because we have dwelt long enough in this mount. Turn you and take your journey and go to the mount of the Amorites and unto all the places nice thereunto in the plain in the hills and in the vale and in the south and by the seaside to the land of the canaanites and unto lebanon unto the great river the river euphrates behold i have set the land before you now as we read the word of god i want you to begin to picture your life and if you can imagine visualize picture God standing before you saying you have been long enough at your level come up higher the land is before you the gateway has been opened the provision is already everything is provided you have been long enough in this situation of yours come up higher behold I have set the land before you go in possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give unto them and to their seed after them. Verse 19. And when we departed from Horeb, we went through all the great and terrible wilderness, which ye saw by the way of the mountain of the Amorites, as the Lord our God commanded us. And we came to Kadesh Barnea. And I said unto you, Ye are come unto the mountain of the Amorites, which the Lord our God does give unto us. Behold, the Lord thy God has set the land before you. Go up and possess age, as the Lord God of thy fathers has said unto thee, Fear not, neither be discouraged. Now, I told you last week, the older generation, they were slow, they were reasoning in their camps, they were full of philosophy, they were full of contrary thoughts, unbelief took over their minds they couldn't enter but thank god for joshua and caleb and the younger generation eventually the younger generation came to the borders of the land of promise then they entered and at the time they got to jericho 
they met with opposition. We're looking at this history so that you will know if you are going to get the victory in your life. Like a soldier gets the victory. Like a businessman gets a victory. Like the student gets the victory. You are going to fight against the opponents, the hindrances, the enemies of progress, and the enemies that will want to deny you from getting to the land of victory. There is a fight to fight. I've told you already, you cannot just fold your hand and say, victory come, victory come. It never comes that way. You cannot sleep all the day long and say, victory, I'm expecting you, I want to be victorious. It doesn't come that way. It comes to the people that recognize there are enemies on the way and they are willing to fight against the enemy. But thank God, you are not fighting in your own strength. The captain of our salvation that never lost any battle, he'll be before you and he will fight your battle for you. In Joshua chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thy land, into thy hand, Jericho. Even though the gates are shut, I've given it to you. Even though the people within Jericho are determined not to allow you to enter, I've given it to you. Even though it appears the walls are tall, high, thick, great, deep, I've given it to you. Even though it appears the people are ready against you, I've given you the land. See, I have given into thine hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. Do you think your enemies are mighty? God has given them into your hand. Do you think that your difficulties are great? You will trample over those difficulties in Jesus' name. The Almighty God is before you and behind you and beneath you and above you. Underneath you are the everlasting arms. There is no way you can fail if you keep on believing God. If you fail, it's because you're unbelieving. If you fail, it's because you removed your eyes from the captain of your salvation going before you. As long as you, see, you keep your mind, your thoughts, your heart, your eyes, your attention, your affection on the Lord Jesus Christ, there is no way you can fail. Failure is not for you. You are not for failure. Victory is for you and we are going to get the victory. But you see, the children of Israel, as we are tracing their history, they got some difficulties, some opponents, some hindrances. In Joshua chapter 9, Joshua chapter 9, verses 1 and 2, I want you to look at the names of their enemies, those who vowed, and they said, if we'll have to fight till we'll die, we will not want the children of Israel to get into the promised land. Look at their names. Joshua chapter 9, verse 1. And it came to pass, when all the kings which were on this side Jordan, in the hills, and in the valleys, and in all the coasts of the great sea, over against Lebanon, these are their names, the Hittite, and the Amorite, and the Canaanite, and the Perizzite, and the Hivite, and the Jebusite, had thereof that they gathered themselves together to fight with Joshua, and with Israel, with one accord they decided they didn't want the children of israel to get into the promise that the lord had made for them and yet the lord was with them and the lord is with you we have been privileged to read all these records of the children of israel the history of israel alone provides valuable lessons for those who want to discover the secrets of victory from the history of the victors in the past we learned that there could be opposition there could be hindrances to victory. The Hittite, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, the Jebusites may be on the way, not wanting the people of God to enter into the blessing. But only those who believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Among those Israelites, only those that really believed that they were going to see the goodness of the Lord, they were the people that entered in. The psalmist said in Psalm 27, verse 13, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. If you want the victory, you must determine and you must believe that you are going to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. The goodness of the Lord is power manifested in you, by you, through you, to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. But if you don't have that determination, that faith within you that you are going to make it, you will faint along the way. 
because these Hittites, Hivites, Perizzites, Jebusites, Amorites, Canaanites, they're not going to just allow you to enter like that without fighting a fight. That's why for us believers now, we've seen the hindrances or the opposition of the enemies for the children of Israel. Let's see it for ourselves. What are the hindrances on our way? For us today now, no more a Canaanite, no more Perizzite, no more Jebusite, no more Hittite or Hivite or Amorite. But for us now, we still have some hindrances we have to overcome. And that's why we are told by Paul the Apostle through the Spirit of God in 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 12. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 12. Fight the good fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. In Ephesians chapter 6, from verse 10, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against the spiritual wickedness or wicked spirits in high places. We wrestle, we fight the good fight of faith against principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world and against wicked spirits in high places and if we didn't do that fight if we didn't seriously determine to get through in the fight and have the victory the victory will just be far away from us if israel the younger generation had folded their hands hoping for the best they would never have had the victory and today if we fold our hands refusing to fight the good fight of faith victory, though it is provided already, will not be our possession. Israel fought. There are enemies that were standing in the way to their victory, and we must fight the enemies that are standing in our way to victory. What are the enemies? What are the hindrances we have to fight today? Number one, Satan himself. Satan himself. Because the Bible makes us to understand in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse Eight, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, your enemy, your opposer, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. But thank God when Jesus Christ said on the cross of Calvary, it is finished, he gave a death blow on the head of Satan. But you know, for you to live in the experience of that victory, you need to understand how to be able to stand in your place, seated in heavenly places together with Christ Jesus and maintain your victory. Number one enemy is Satan. Number two, the flesh. The flesh. Oh, but you said, I thought that the Bible said we are not fighting against flesh and blood. Yes, we are not fighting against the flesh of other people. The blood of other people. But your own flesh. Your own flesh. The desires of the flesh the tendencies of the flesh, the demands of the flesh will contribute to wanting to put you down, defeat you, make you less spiritual in your life if you yield to them. But that's why we're told in the scriptures that we need to recognize that the flesh is an enemy we must put under every time. And Paul the Apostle himself, he said, I put my body under, I put it under subjection, lest after uh, preaching to other people of this way of the Lord, the way of victory, I myself, I become defeated, I become a castaway. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 16, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh, for the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to the other, so that he cannot do the things he would. The flesh will want us to just yield to the works of the flesh and thereby lose the victory and thereby become a servant to the flesh. But if you are going to win the victory, you must understand that flesh is an enemy. What are, this, what are the manifestations, the works of the flesh? 
those demons that you are to overcome. Put down, put under subjection in Galatians chapter 5, verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Which are these? Adultery, fornication. You see that? How many people the Lord has called? And instead of having the victory in their lives, they allowed the flesh. Do you remember the children of Israel? As they were in the wilderness, the Amalekites came against them. And we are told that they went out in that battle and Joshua, uh, that great, great man that Moses sent out while Moses was still alive and Moses was lifting up his hand with Aaron and all around him. Joshua defeated the Amalekites. Balak came against the children of Israel again. With the help of Balaam, wanted to use divination and enchantment against the children of Israel. Again, they won the victory. But when fornication came, when adultery came, 23, 24,000 of them just became defeated and they died and perished in one day. That sin was a sin that caused the downfall of Samson. That was a sin that brought trouble into perpetual trouble into the house of David. That was made Solomon, the wisest man that lived in his generation, to lose the victory that he ought to have. Think about it. Satan is an enemy. And if you are going to win the victory, constant victory, complete victory, total victory, permanent victory, you are going to deal with the problems of the flesh. And these are the works of the flesh. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. You've seen number one enemy, Satan. Number two enemy, the flesh. Number three enemy, the world. First John chapter 2, verse 15. Hindrances to victory. And these hindrances we must overcome. My brothers, my sisters, there are Christians. Listen to me, Christians. Many, many places all over the world. Since they became converted, they're still battling with adultery and fornication. The tendency, the temptation. And that thing draws them and draws them. And they always say, oh, it's this my flesh. After 10 years in Christianity, oh, it's this my flesh. And after 20 years of believing the Lord, oh, it's this my flesh. My brother, my sister, if you don't just rise up and get angry against all those tendencies of the flesh and say, no, I want the victory. If you don't, if you don't overcome those Amalekites in your life, Amorites in your life, the Canaanite and the Hittite and the Hivite and the Jebusite and the Perisite, if you don't overcome, are you ever going to get the victory? But you know, this is the hour of victory. That you will say, Christ has overcome for me. I'm going to step into the victory of Christ. And I'm going to be an overcomer against Satan, against the flesh. And number three, against the world. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that are in the world, all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away. And the lost thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Enemy number one, Satan. Number two, the flesh. Number three, the world. Number four. Number four. You know, when you begin to look at the people that lived in days gone by. Thank God. We have the record, the history of the children of Israel. And the history of a lot of people. A lot of people. In the Bible. And it, is, it should be easier for us now, my brothers and sisters, who have the victory. It should be easier for us than it was for Abraham. It should be easier for us than it was for people like Moses. It should be easier for us than it was for people that lived days gone by, years gone by. You remember Abraham? Great man, great man, friend of God. But in his family, his victory was delayed. There were problems he shouldn't have gotten into that he got into because of the number four enemy, unbelief. God had given the promise. And Sarah said, now my husband, let's try this. And just a moment of yielding from Abraham to Sarah, 
it got them into a lot of trouble a lot of trouble you remember Zechariah the father of John the Baptist good man great man spiritual man obedient to the Lord following the ways of the Lord he wasn't bothered with adultery with fornication with all the sins of the flesh you know the only problem an unbelieving questioning heart because that angel said Zechariah your prayers are answered you are going to have a child and the unbelieving questioning heart said how will this be seeing that I am old and the angel said I stand in the presence of God because you have not believed my word you will not be able to speak or communicate for nine months for all the time the child will be born until the child will be born you know he suffered momentarily short time because of the unbelief in our lives we suffer because of unbelief do you remember that man that lost the victory at the time of the man of God when the man of God said behold tomorrow according to my word and the word of God just the food will be sold but at a cheap price tomorrow and that man with an unbelieving heart unbelieving heart oh he said if the Lord should open the windows of heaven might this thing be oh I wish he didn't say that he would have enjoyed the plenty, the abundant life, the provision of the Lord for his own people. And the man of God looked at him and he said, You unbelieving man, you'll see it. But the mouth of unbelief will never taste of the goodness of the Lord. You'll not be able to eat out of it. I'm telling you that an enemy, an enemy confronting us is this unbelief. And in Hebrews chapter 3, Hebrews chapter 3, verse 12 and verse 18 and verse 19. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Verse 18. To whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believed not. So, we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Let's be believing. Thomas said, I will not believe. Why? Thomas, do you think that Peter will tell you a lie saying, I have seen the Lord? Can you ever doubt John the beloved who stayed at the bosom of Jesus Christ before he died? Can you ever doubt John that ran along with Peter and got to the tomb and heard the voice of the angel saying, Why seek you the living among the dead? He is not here, he is risen. Thomas, why are you doubting? The other disciples, they said they had seen the Lord. Why are you saying, except I see myself, I will not believe? My brother, my sister, unbelief will hinder us from getting into the victory. And Jesus Christ came and he said, Thomas, reach hither thy hand. Behold the nail prints in my hand and also thrust your hand on my side. Oh, then he saw the Lord and he knelt down and he said, My God, my Lord, I believe now. And Jesus said, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Why didn't you believe before you saw me? Why didn't you believe all things are possible with God? If I have that resurrection power within me and I was able to raise up Lazarus after he died for four days, why do you think that when I died for only three days that I could not rise from the dead? Why are you unbelieving? Blessed are those that have not seen and have believed. And we are blessed. Here we are today. We have not seen, but we have believed. We believe Jesus was born of Virgin Mary. We are not there, but we believe. We believe Jesus lived a pure life, a perfect life. We were not there, but we believe. We believe he died on the cross. We were not there with the centurion to behold him when he said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But we believe. We believe that on the third day he rose from the dead, triumphant over death and over all the Roman enemies. We have not seen, but we believe. And Jesus said, Blessed are we. We have not seen it, but we believe it. Now, number five, fear. That hinders people. Fear. Fear in everything. Fear in getting married. Fear in living the abundant life. Fear in associating with fellow believers. Fear in committing themselves to the Lord. Fear in holding on to the promises of God. Fear in confessing what the Lord has said about them. Fear of sickness. Fear of the past. Fear of the future. Fear of the present. Fear of everything. And the Bible says, The Lord has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of a sound mind. Number six, enemy, worry and anxiety. Worry and anxiety. What will happen tomorrow? What will happen in the future? 
what will I eat? What will I drink? Will God be able to make a table in the wilderness? Can God do this? My brother, God can. He made the world. He can do all things. And Jesus said, why take his thoughts? Saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? Wherewith us shall we be clothed? Behold the lilies. That even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like any of these. And if God so takes care of the lily in the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more shall he take care of you, O ye of little faith? Wherefore, take no thought, saying, what, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? Wherewith us shall we be clothed? For after all these things will the Gentiles seek, but your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of these things. Only seek ye for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. There is no, there is no reason to worry. Are you doubting God? Are you thinking it will fail? Are you thinking it will forget you? And you will sink in the middle of the sea without God being able to take you up? How can you think like that? But you know, the enemy that hinders people from getting into the land of promise, worry, anxiety. Number seven, discouragement. And face it, brothers and sisters, once you have allowed Satan, the flesh, the world, unbelief, fear, worry and anxiety, well, what will follow is that there will be discouragement. But let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. That in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, the Lord would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. And receive you unto myself, so that where I am, ye may be also. Be not of doubtful mind. Do not be unbelieving. Do not be discouraged. Jesus Christ, the captain of our salvation, is before us. We shall have the victory in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I've shown you these hindrances to victory. Satan, the flesh, the world, unbelief, fear, worry, and anxiety, and discouragement. But then, I want to show you now the highway to victory. The highway to victory while we are on our way. Let me remind you of Joshua again, chapter 1. Joshua, chapter 1, verse 3. Every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. Verse 5, there shall not any man be able to stand before you. All the days of thy life, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you. I will not forsake you. Before we can walk in victory, there are certain steps we must take. Because a slave to sin and a servant of Satan cannot be a master of circumstances at the same time. Show me the man that is a slave to sin. There can be no victory in his life in any other area. Show me a man that is a servant to Satan. He cannot be a master of circumstances at the same time. But the one that will just wake up and arise and stand up in faith and say, I am going to have the victory over sin and Satan, and sickness, and spirits, and self, and circumstances. The one that will determine that is going to have the victory is the one that is going to be master of circumstances, but then he'll be free from sin and free from all cults and secret societies. But you, you pick up the man and he's still in a secret society. Don't you know that the general overseer of the secret society is the devil, Satan? And if you're you in a secret society, under the control, the supervision of uh, the devil himself, how can you at the same time have the victory over sin and Satan and sickness and spirits? But then, if you're going to just take your stand and come out of that secret cult, come out of that secret society, come out of sin, then the victory life will start in your life. That means for a sinner to start on the highway of victory, he must, number one, repent. Number two, renounce. Number three, receive. Repent of sin. Renounce Satan. Receive the Savior. Sin is a sin that you must repent of because the Lord himself said, Repent ye and believe the gospel. Then you must renounce Satan with the works and the agents of Satan. You must not get involved anymore with the works of darkness. And then, as many as received Christ, as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God. Even as many as believed on his name. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ there. Repent of sin. Renounce Satan and all his works. 
receive Jesus Christ as Savior, embrace him and believe him as your Savior, then the victory will be definite. Now for the believer, you want to live in constant victory? Here are eight points I want you to consider. Number one, resist. Resist the devil. When temptation comes, resist that temptation. Temptation comes to everybody. But God will never allow you to be tempted more than your strength. Resist that temptation. Resist the devil. And the Bible makes us to know the devil will flee from you. Number two, remove the stumbling blocks in your way of victory. Think about your life. Watch your life. What made you to stumble before? Maybe different from one person to the other. What made you to stumble before? For Abraham, it was fear that they would kill him if he confessed this was his wife. That's a stumbling block. For Moses, it was just getting angry, agitated when those people remained stiff-necked and rebellious. Different for different people. For Aaron, it was, you know, the fear that these people, if I do not do what they want me to do, these children of Israel, they may kill me. And it was weak, weak, weak. And, you know, there are people like that. The stumbling block is that you cannot confess Christ before your family. You cannot confess Christ before your co-workers. And you are afraid if you confess Christ, they will just lynch you, tear you to pieces. That's a stumbling block. For something, you know it. It was women. What a bad, bad, bad thing in his life. That weakness. The thing that put him down. Remove these two eyes. Stumbling block. You know, for David, the same thing, women. You remember Solomon? Wise, yet he had a stumbling block he did not remove. And that did not have him to, that did not allow him to have the total, the complete victory. And in your own life, you can begin to look at your life and look back since you were born again. And say, what are the stumbling blocks that have hindered me from total victory? And you remove the stumbling blocks. Number three, reject negative thoughts thoughts of unbelief and begin to just rejoice in the Lord and allow into your heart thoughts that are positive but you know thoughts that are satanic thoughts that are just human thoughts that bring defeat reject them reject them they are negative they are thoughts of unbelief and begin to think the thoughts of God Think the thoughts of God about God himself. Think the thoughts of God about Christ. Think the thoughts of God about yourself. And begin to rejoice in the promises of the Lord. And just repeat that over and over and over until your mind is renewed with the word of the Lord. So then resist the devil, remove the stumbling blocks, and reject the negative thoughts, the thoughts of unbelief. Number four, reprove the workers of iniquity. Don't always be smiling and laughing while those unbelievers, those sinners, are making fun of the name of the Lord. While they are doing evil, reprove the workers of iniquity. That's the path of, of victorious living. Separate yourself from evil companions. Number five, rely on God's promises. Those promises, they'll carry you across the river. They'll take you be beyond your mountain. They'll get you out of the valley. They will make you successful. They will give you victory over sin. They make you more than a conqueror over Satan. They will grant you the power to cast evil spirits out. The promises of God, they are so great, they are so mighty. They are so effective in the mouth of the believer. Rely on the promises of God. Believe in and trust in the Lord. Number six, recite God's word. Positively confessing what the word of God says you are in Christ. What the word of God says you are in Christ. If it, it will put you over worry, over anxiety. Have you ever looked at the life of Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ never allowed a single day to pass without making a positive confession about himself. And he will say, I am the bread of life. He never said anything negative about himself. He never said he was going to be defeated. Oh no, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. He will say, I and my father are one. He will say, go and tell that fox, I walk today and I walk tomorrow and the third day I will be perfected. 
and even when he talked about his death he ended up in a positive note he said you destroy this temple it is up there he said and i will build it up i'll raise it up the third day always always positive about himself and he always said what god said about him and he said i always please my father i do things that are pleasing to him every time every time you know he said i build my church the gates of hell can never prevail against it you know he always said something positive good about himself and if you're a christian a follower of jesus christ you are not going to be confessing what satan is thinking about you you are going to be confessing what god the word of god has said you are in christ that you are more than a conqueror that you can do all things through christ who strengthens you that i am crucified with christ nevertheless i live yet not i but christ lives within me that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world and that i am an overcomer the faith in me is able to overcome i am going to the other side i'm a believer i can cast out devils i can heal the sick and if sickness comes i will get well i will not perish i will live i will declare the goodness of the lord always saying what the word of god says about you recite god's word number seven remember past victories and examples of God's faithfulness. As he healed you before, remember that and use that as a stepping stone into another blessing. As he saved you, remember that and use that as a stepping stone to get sanctified. As it been a blessing to you in your life, remember that, remember the past victories you have got. And remember the examples of God's faithfulness and say, I know the God who did that for me in the past, he will do much more for me in the future. Number eight, renew your consecration to follow the Lord every day every day i and my father are one i'm in christ christ is in me i'm going to keep on walking with the lord i'm going to keep on close to the lord every time renew your consecration to follow the lord every day you know my brothers my sisters if you do this every time victory is definite you are going to be victorious in jesus name now number four hosanna of victors the victims are always complaining always murmuring the victims are always saying well i don't know god never answers my prayer always sick always poor i don't know what i have done i thought god had forgiven all my sins but he's still punishing me for my sins oh there is no job and there is no sickness the promises of god are always working for other people they never work for me i'm afraid i don't know what will happen tomorrow but the one that is believing, even while the, while the walls of Jericho are still standing firm, is shouting the praise of God. There is an Hosanna in his mouth. Even while it appears the Red Sea has not been divided, there is a shout in his mouth. Even when River Jordan has not been divided for him to cross over, there is a shout of praise in his mouth. We're told in, in 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. But thanks be to God, praises be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the, that's the victor. That's the person that knows that he will overcome. And the moment you know you will overcome, you are going to allow the praises of the Lord to be coming forth out of your lips. In Joshua chapter 6. Joshua chapter 6. Verse 15. And it came to pass on the seventh day, that they rose early about the dawning of the day and compassed the city after the same manner seven times only on that day they compassed the city seven times verse 16 and it came to pass at the seventh time when the priest blew with the trumpets joshua said unto the people shout for the lord has given you the city the walls were still up only the believers can shout at such a time the problems were still there only the believing people can shout at such a time but you know, if you shout, the Hosanna of the Lord, victory is yours. But you know, if you stay back and you say, how oh, can I shout when the walls are still there? When the gates are still locked? When the conditions are still the same? When the enemies have not yet been defeated? How can I shout in my condition? The one that refuses to shout before the walls come down may never shout. Because there's some believing. But you know, in verse 20, the Bible says, So the people shouted. When the priest blew with the trumpet, and it came to pass, when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with a great shout, that the wall fell down flat. Your walls are going to fall down. All those hindrances, they are going to vanish away. You can lift up your head. You can lift up your eyes to the Lord. Because all these enemies that have plagued your life since you became a Christian, 
you won't see them anymore. This is not a time to continue crying, to continue regretting, to continue suffering, to continue in sorrow and say, Lord, what am I going to do? Christ has paid the whole price. And when he said, it is finished, your victory is ensured. And now if you just raise up your heart to the Lord in faith, your victory is definite in Jesus' name. There is Hosanna in the mouths of the people that are believing God. And then they realize the hour of victory has come. You see, when is the time for victory? It's now. When can I begin to enjoy victory over sin, victory over Satan, victory over self, victory over circumstances, victory over sickness and spirit? It is now in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2. For he says, I have had thee in a time accepted. And in the day of salvation I have succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. This is our hour of victory. Isaiah chapter 60. Verse 1, Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1, Arise and shine, for the light is come, thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people, but for you the Lord shall arise upon thee. And his glory shall be seen upon thee. Your hour of victory has come. And if you will believe the Lord, your victory can start this very moment. If you will believe the Lord, your mountains can move away this very moment. If you will believe the Lord, your infirmities can move away this very moment. If you will believe the Lord, your sickness can be healed this very moment. If you will believe the Lord, impossibilities will become possible this very moment. The hour of victory has come. Arise and shine. Let's rise up. As we're rising up, let me reveal to you the mind of the Lord concerning you. In all these things the Lord has been revealing to us, it is so that we will enjoy the victory. And I am sure you are going to enjoy the victory. Even though any of us we might have been defeated in the past by sin, satanic influence, by sickness, by spirits, by self, by circumstances, the Lord has told us to arise and shine and we are going to shine. The Lord has told us the glory is risen and the glory of the Lord is going to come upon us and it will be so. As we are standing up, listening to the mind of the Lord, the revelation of the will of God concerning you. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Today you are coming more than ever before you are coming into the secret place where the witches cannot see you anymore. Where Satan cannot see you anymore. Amen. Where sin will not be your Lord anymore. Amen. And you dwell there. Don't just come in and then go out. You dwell in the secret place of the Most High. And you abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely, He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers. Under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night. Nor of the arrow that flies by day. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness. Nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side. And ten thousand at thy right hand. But it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes will you see and behold the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation, there shall no evil befall you again. Neither shall any plague come near thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon, that shall thou trample under your feet. Because you have set your love upon God, therefore he says, I will deliver you. I will set you on high, because you have known his name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. In the day when you call, God will answer. In the night when you call, God will answer. In the village, in the town, in the office, at home, on the street, 
when you call upon this God of heaven, he will answer you. I will be with him in trouble. You are not alone anymore. Don't feel lonely again. The Almighty God says, I will be with you in trouble. I will deliver him. I will honor him with long life. With long life. With long life. With long life will I satisfy him. My brothers and sisters, if anybody is telling you that God hates you, God wants to kill you, God doesn't want to bless you, they are telling you lies. God wants you to have the victory in every area of your life. Because it says, with long life will I satisfy him and I will show him my salvation. Now you can arise and shine. The glory of the Lord is upon you. If you have been a sinner before, you can repent and tell the Lord, O oh Lord, I come. O oh Lord, I come. If you are a sinner, repent, renounce Satan, and receive the Savior. As a believer, give yourself more to the Lord. Your victory is definite. Your victory is definite. Look up to the Lord. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. You are not alone again. The Lord is with you. If you are a sinner, repent of your sin. Embrace the Lord. Keep to the Lord. As a believer, come nearer to God. There is victory in Jesus. There is victory in Jesus. Victory. Victory. Victory in Jesus.